So welcome to this short introduction to ProgSpace. Now, before we go into details about what ProgBase is, let's do a little background. Uh, a big problem today is that prog programs become legacy and must be rewritten. One major reason for this uh, is that programming languages and environments change and evolve. Uh, reuse of software is low. That's another problem. Uh, that is internally in an organization, uh, but also between organizations. Uh, a major reason for this is also the use of different programming languages and environments. So what is ProgSpace? It is one, a programming language, and two, a collection of tools. Uh, there's a command line tool and there's a web tool. And we'll uh, look at both of them in turn. So the programming language. Uh, the ProgSpace programming language is only for computations. So this means that all the data you need is given as, as input to the library, to the functions, and it produces output based only on that input. It contains, uh, the programming language contains carefully selected features, uh, few but powerful. So if you use this programming language, it will give you a range of benefits. Uh, the programs you write will be very long-lived. Uh, it does not need to be rewritten often. The programs will be highly translatable uh, and they will be highly re reusable. The translatability uh, enhances the reusability. And the, programming, uh, the programs written in ProgSpace are very understandable because the features are simple but powerful and they're well known. So an overview of the ProgSpace language. Uh, it contains functions, uh, floating point arithmetic, if then else if else statements, um, for loops, uh, and you can import other ProgSpace libraries written in ProgSpace. Um, the types you have uh, is the, are doubles, uh, booleans, uh, characters, uh, you can make structures out of, uh, out of these types, and you have arrays. And one very important uh, foundation for ProgSpace uh, is a, a fundamental result in computer science, which says that these buildings, building blocks are sufficient to build all computations. So let's now do um, a demo of programming in ProgSpace. Uh, what we'll do is to create a function that computes the average of an array of numbers. Uh, we'll then use that function on this uh, case here. Okay, so now we are in a regular editor. Um, we are programming Java, which is one of the input languages you can use to ProgSpace. <coughs> and what we'll now do is to create a function to compute averages. So all functions in, uh, in ProgSpace are public functions in the public namespace. Um, the average function will return uh, a number and the input will be an array of numbers. <coughs> now to compute uh, the average we need uh, a couple of variables uh, and we will return the average as soon as we have uh, computed it. Now in ProgSpace um, you have to declare the variables at the top and you have to return the, um, the result at the bottom. <coughs> now the first thing we have to check here is that um, there are numbers in the list. If not, we're going to get a division by zero exception. Uh, so it cannot be a zero. The next uh, thing we do is to compute the sum of the numbers. Now, as you can see here, all the numbers and all, um, all the numeric variables are doubles. That is because you only have floating point arithmetic in, uh, in ProgSpace. Uh, 
And because we use a double variable as a loop variable, we have to cast it before we can use it in Java. Now the final thing we do before we have the result here is to divide the sum by the number of elements in the array. Now if the length of the, um, if the, length of the array is zero, uh, the average doesn't really make sense. But in this uh, example, we'll just set the average to zero. <clears throat> okay, so let's uh, make a test for this uh, function. Okay, so we need to send in the uh, the list of numbers that we um, that we had in the demo. Okay, so let's create a list of numbers. We initialize it with the uh, numbers from the example. We compute the average using our function that we just programmed. And we use the uh, testing library uh, to do the assert that the average is four. And we need to uh, keep track of the number of failures. And we return the number of failures at the end. And we add this uh, test to our suite down here. Now, if we run this test, <coughs> we can see that it passed down here. Uh, and before the test ran, uh, the dependencies of this library were imported here. And we will look at that later. Now, uh, this, what I programmed here was just plain Java. And that is an important part of ProgSpace. Um, you program a, a reduced or a simplified version of uh, Java and you then pass it through the ordinary Java development tools as we did here. And we then run the progspace uh, command line tool to analyze it and see if it, uh, if it um, is according to the progspace rules. Now, as we can see, um, there was no output here, which means that the, uh, the code that I wrote was valid prog space. Now let's try to do uh, something that is not valid, to use integers, for example. Then we'll get an uh, error saying that integer literals are not supported. They must be doubles. Okay, so the next uh, command we'll use is the upload function. And the upload function uploads the, uh, the library we have just written uh, to the progspace repository, the web tool. <coughs> okay, so here in the repository browser, we can see the, um, the function we just computed we just uh, programmed. If we go into this uh, function, we'll see the Java version uh, here, and we'll see the, the, um, the test we ran over here. Now this data that you see on the right-hand si side was extracted from the test that we just wrote. Uh, we can, of course, add to this test if you want to, and uh, the average will be different down here. Uh, one interesting thing here is that um, we can select a different language up here and the, the function will be translated. For example, now we see the function in Java 5 plus. If we click on the C button here, here's the function in C, uh, 89 in that case. Uh, if we click on the C++ button, we see it in C++, uh, JavaScript. 
uh, C sharp, PHP, uh, Python, and Visual Basic. So that is the translation of the function in, in the web tool. Um, as I said earlier, over here you can actually run the program. And the reason you can run the program is because we first translate it into JavaScript and then load it into the browser. This enables us to test the program out live. So we can just add numbers if you want and to get another uh, average or a move, of course. And as we program it, if the list is uh, empty, you get uh, a zero out. Okay, so this was a quite simple example of, uh, of programming in ProgSpace. Uh, but let's look at a few uh, more complex uh, examples th that are in our library. Uh, the first example we can look at is from the matrix library. And here we have a function that computes the eigenvalues. And that is a quite a complex task in a linear algebra. And um, here you can see an example with a, for a two by two matrix that computes the eigenvalues minus one and minus two over here. You can of course change that as well to get uh, different values. <coughs> um, not all inputs give uh, eigenvalues. Um, if we navigate into the, uh, into the functions here, we can see that the implementation is a lot more complex involving, uh, as you can see here, matrix, uh, matrix al algebra. Another example is um, a graphics library. So here we have an example uh, that uh, blurs an image, giving us inputs. And this, um, this function includes uh, graphics uh, computations. So if we look into this uh, blur function, we can see that it does um, uh, complex um, graphics algorithms. Uh, a final example is the uh, barcode. And as we can see here, um, the function generates a barcode image. Okay, so let's look at the tools that come with ProgSpace. Now we just looked at the analyze uh, uh, function, which analyzes the ProgSpace um, uh, code that you've written to see that it is valid ProgSpace. We also looked at, looked at the upload function, with up, which uploads the library onto the uh, repository that I just uh, showed you. Now let's look at the convert function and the import dependencies function. <coughs> okay, so if you want to convert the entire um, uh, the entire program, we can use ProgSpace, the co ProgSpace command line tool, and do convert. Uh, the input language is Java. We'll take the program at the current location and we'll, we'll output it as Python. So here's the folder that we just created and here we have the uh, source code now in Python. So if you open it, we can see that the source code has been translated into Python. Uh, let's see the program that we wrote. So here's the program that we wrote now in uh, Python code. The test that we wrote is also uh, in Python. So here we can now run the test again to see if it uh, performs the same way, if it passes in Python as well. <laughs> let's try it one of the other languages. Let's do basic 9. We'll put that into a VB9 folder. Uh, 
Uh, now as you can see here, you have the two folders as the last time, but now the code is in Visual Basic. So let's find the, the function we wrote here. So here you can see the program is, uh, the function is now in, um, in uh, Visual Basic 9. And of course the test as well. So we can, uh, we can run the test here as well to see that it passes the same way. Let's look at the import dependencies uh, tool. Um, now this library that we wrote have a number of uh, dependencies to other libraries. It is a st statistics library, so it, uh, it needs a sort algorithm, and a library, a library for parsing numbers, a maths library, and RS library. So these here are in Java because we are working in Java, but we could as well work in C, for example. And then we import the dependencies in C instead. So we do prog space, import depths. Uh, let's import the dependencies in um, C in 99. So here you can see that the tool does um, computes which dependencies your project have. You can see the nesting levels of the dependencies and the versions. And it imports these dependencies as in this case C. So if we look uh, now in the imports uh, folder, we can see that the programs are now in C instead. And now, of course, the, uh, the test that we ran earlier will not work because the dependencies are in C. Uh, let's try to import the dependencies in another language. to Python. And now the dependencies are in Python. Okay, so that was an overview of the tools that are in the, the ProgSpace tool suite. And we did the demo of the conversion uh, and of the import dependencies. Now, as a summary, you can use ProgSpace to develop uh, libraries of computations if you want to avoid rewrites and if you want wide reuse of the software that you have. Here are some links if you find this interesting. Uh, you have the ProgSpace homepage at theprogspace.com. You have the documentation of ProgSpace, uh, a blog. And the repository and the web tool is located at repo.progspace.com. Uh, I can also recommend this talk down here if you want to have a little bit of background on the foundational theorems. Okay, so thank you. Let's do a Q&A if anyone has any uh, questions.
Okay, so Pooja asks a question about the uh, about the tests or the test suite app you used. Okay, so here we have um, IntelliJ, uh, which I use to program Java, uh, and of course uh, one of the input languages to ProgSpace is Java code. Now, if you look at the dependencies that are imported into, uh, into this, we have a testing uh, library down here. Um, this testing library has, okay, so everything is in Python now, of course. I'll re-import re it in, um, in Java. Okay. So here we have the testing library. And we have a couple of the usual uh, functions that you would expect, assert false, assert true, assert equals, assert string, string equals, and of course this one will be extended with further functions as is needed. Uh, now they are actually quite simple functions. They simply check the condition. If it, if it is false, it adds to the number of failures. Uh, the way that these tests are run is by having a test suite function here. And here you run all your tests, which are simple functions that returns the number of failures. It adds up the failures and return the failures. Uh, to integrate it, this into JUnit, you have just have to have one file. And this file here runs the tests and checks if it is equal to zero. That's it. And then you can launch the tests in IntelliJ as I did here, for example. And Pooja also asked if, if this code was in ProgSpace. Yes, the whole testing setup is in ProgSpace, except this uh, snippet here, uh, which just binds, um, binds it together with JUnit. Okay, so... Another question, uh, is the initial code written in, uh, in a Java-like language? Yes, it is actually written in Java. Uh, so all the code you write here has to be valid Java. And this, when I write the code here in IntelliJ IDE, it is simply just Java. But if I choose to use some feature of Java that is not supported in ProgSpace, um, for example, as I am, um, if you want to do a um, system out, for example, this one is not supported. Uh, if you then do an analyze, it will fail the analysis because uh, that feature is not supported. Uh, prog space is only for doing computations. So you program plain Java, just a simplified version of it. Um, and when you pass it to ProgSpace, you can then use the uh, conversions uh, to other languages. Okay, so another question. Um, one has to start with Java and then translate into other languages. Uh, right now, the only language supported as an input language into ProgSpace is Java. Um, that doesn't has, have to be the case. If you look here at the list of supported output languages, which, um, which I can write to, or which the Prog ProgSpace tools can write to, uh, Visual Basic Care, for example, could be an input language. Uh, C Sharp could be an input language. Uh, C and C++ could be an input language. But right now, the only input language is Java. Um, 
the prog space project will focus on creating more supporting more languages as output languages uh, and then move on to supporting more input languages later So another question, um, will Progspace become more appealing now that the Java has moved to a functional style of programming? Now it is quite, in one way, uh, the Progspace functions are functions. So it does appeal to the functional style of programming in one sense, but in another sense, it, is, it does not use functional concepts uh, such as lambdas, for example. Um, it very much uh, embraces the imperative style of programming. So um, that's a pro and that's a con. Mm. So another question about uh, the relationship or how Progspace is in relation to object-oriented programming. Uh, Progspace does not include any object-oriented features. So Yeah, I would say, here's a question about would a large team use Progspace or would individual developers use it? Um, I do think it is quite useful to large teams because you, <coughs> because you can produce libraries of computations that last a long time. So in areas like banking applications, insurance, uh, stuff like that where code lasts a really long time, I think this is quite uh, valuable. As for individual developers, if you wanted the flexibility of using your the code that you wrote in different languages in different environments, it would be useful. Uh, you could, for example, develop a library that uh, that you can then sell or open source that people can use in different languages. So I think it is useful quite uh, for teams of developers and individual developers if you want the benefits uh, of Progspace. That is. Okay, so if you want to, there's a question about um, about packaging uh, the product. Um, I'm not quite sure what you refer to, but um, if you want to look up uh, the Progspace website, you can see it here. Uh, here you can sign up for a free trail and test it out if you want to. That's the full product. Um, uh, when you when you develop programs for Progspace, you can upload it into the Progspace repository here. And if you want to host your library as a private library, you can do that. Now the pricing of uh, the tool uh, is over here. So it is now $65 per month per developer. That's the pricing model. Um, if you have created a library with Progspace, uh, you can package it up um, 
you convert it to different languages and you can sell it on whatever platform you wish or you can use the library as I showed you here as a dependency to your software project if you're programming a Python project for example you can import the dependencies in Python and just use it in Python as regular uh, dependencies Okay, so another question. Um, does a successful run of the analyze command guarantee that the code will run as expected in the target conversation language, conversion language? Very good question. And yes, it does, it guarantees that. Uh, but of course, you have to follow uh, the guidelines of how to develop and the guidelines are in the documentation section here. Uh, you can read up on the, um, on the details here um, and you have to follow that guidelines as well as doing the analyze uh, command. Okay, so another question here. What version of Java, the Java program, programming language can be used for inputs? Uh, right now, it's a version five of Java, uh, but I actually think that you can go all the way down to Java one as an input language. Uh, currently, the tooling supports Java five. Uh, and of course, you can use any higher version of language. So there's a question here about using newer uh, ver uh, features of the Java language. Uh, of course, you can only use uh, the parts of, uh, of a Java that is according to the ProgSpace spec if you want it to pass through the ProgSpace analyzer and the ProgSpace tools. Um, of course, you can program a part of your library in ProgSpace to get the benefits and a part without, but then of course, those parts that are outside the, the scope of prog space will not be, you cannot pass it through the converter or the analyzer. Okay, so any further question, guys? Okay, so thank you.